Hey everyone, in this video we're going to talk about non-canonical NF kappa B signaling pathway. So in another video we're going to talk about the canonical pathway, but in this video we're going to specifically focus on the non-canonical NF kappa B signaling pathway. So to begin, what is NF kappa B? What does it stand for? Well, NF kappa B actually stands for nuclear factor kappa light chain enhancer of activated B cells. Now, what are some of the differences between the non-canonical versus the canonical NF kappa B signaling pathway? Well, they differ in their cell receptor and cytoplasmic adapters. And one uh, thing in particular is that IKK alpha is used in the non-canonical pathway as opposed to IKK beta, which is used in the canonical pathway. Now, another big issue, uh, another big difference is that the non-canonical pathway is uh, slower activation, and it's slower uh, activation compared to canonical pathway, and it actually takes hours for this pathway to become active. Now, the non-canonical NF kappa B signaling pathway is involved in various processes. One of the main processes that this pathway is involved in is actually B cell maturation. Another one is osteoclast differentiation. And another one is lymphoid organogenesis. So a lot of it has to do with the immune system and some other functions um, involved in uh, bone remodeling and, and so forth. Now, because it's involved in B cell maturation and lymphoid organogenesis, it comes as no surprise that this pathway has been implicated in several immunopathologies. Some are autoimmune diseases. And a big focus of research is this pathway's role in immune cancer such as Hodgkin's lymphoma and diffuse large B cell lymphomas as well. So what is the mechanism of action of the non-canonical NF kappa B signaling pathway? Well, in a constitutional or normal state, this pathway is considered inactivated. So when this pathway is inactivated, NIK or NF kappa B inducing kinase is bound to another protein known as TRAF3, which is TNF receptor associated factor 3. Now, TRAF3 is itself bound to another protein, TRAF2, or TNF receptor associated factor 2. Now, TRAF2 is itself bound to CIAP1 and 2, which is cellular inhibitor of apoptosis 1 and 2. So, in the inactivated state, when this complex has been formed, CIAP will actually ubiquinate. The NIK will ubiquinate the NF kappa B inducing kinase, and when the when NIK actually gets ubiquinated, it leads to the proteasomal degradation of NIK, leading to low levels of NIK in the cell. Now, what is the purpose of NIK? Well, to answer that question, we have to look at something else. Uh, there's a protein dimer within the cell consisting of a P100 and REL B. And this dimer is considered inactive, and I'll tell you what this dimer does in a moment. But nonetheless, when NIK, when the levels of NIK are low within the cell, this dimer is in, is in an inactive form. It is in a P100 and REL B dimer form. So how does the non-canonical NF kappa B pathway actually get activated? Well, it actually gets activated in a receptor-mediated fashion. So the receptors involved in this pathway, there's actually several receptors that can um, operate within this pathway. Some of them include CD40, BAFR, or B cell activating factor receptor, and LTBR, or lymphotoxin beta receptor. Now, the ligands for this receptor can be several things as well. There are several different ligands depending on the receptor involved. So, if it's a CD4 receptor, the ligand for the receptor is CD40L. For the BAF receptor, it is BAF. And for the lymphotoxin beta receptor, it is lymphotoxin beta. And now there are also a couple other ligands, such as Rankle and Tweak, which also activate the non canonical NF kappa B signaling pathway. Now, when a ligand does bind to its corresponding receptor and activates the non canonical NF kappa B signaling pathway, what happens is that instead of this protein complex involving TRAF2 and TRAF3 and CIAP binding to the uh, NIK protein, what happens is that 
TRAF2 and TRAF3 actually are recruited to the membrane. They're recruited to the activated receptor. And then what happens then is that CIAP itself follows TRAF2. It follows the TRAF2 and TRAF3 proteins and actually binds to TRAF2. Now this leaves, in some sense, it leaves the NIK protein alone. It doesn't, TRAF3 doesn't bind to NIK. So that means that CIAP is not able to ubiquinate NIK, which leads to NIK levels becoming increased within the cell. And in fact, CIAP, instead of it ubiquinating NIK, it actually ubiquinates TRAF3. And then this TRAF3 actually gets degraded. So in addition to CIAP not ubiquinating NIK, it actually ubiquinates TRAF3 instead, reducing TRAF3 levels. And remember, TRAF3 is what binds to NIK. So NIK is free from its inhibition, its degradation in the proteasome. Now, when NIK levels are increased, NIK is able to perform its function. And that function, as the name suggests, it's an NF-kappa B inducing kinase, it actually phosphorylates IKK alpha. When IKK alpha has been phosphorylated, what it does is it actually interacts with this P100 rel B inactive dimer. So what it does then is that IKK alpha itself acts as a kinase, it phosphorylates P100. This leads to P100 becoming ubiquinated. So this is very important. So P100 can then be degraded in the proteasome itself. So once P100 is degraded in the proteasome, it actually releases a product known as P52. When there's P52, P52 is also able to bind to RELB in a similar fashion as P100. So instead of having a P100 RELB dimer, we now have a P52 RELB dimer. And this dimer is considered active. It's an active dimer. So the whole point of the pathway becoming active is to actually form this active dimer, P52 and RELB. And what we saw before was when this pathway is inactivated, NIK levels or NIC levels are reduced in the, in the cell and we start to see increases in P100 rel B. But when the pathway is active, we see NIC phosphorylating IKK alpha, which phosphorylates P100, leading to its ubiquination and de degradation in the proteasome, which leads to the product P52. And then P52 can then bind to rel B, and then that's the active dimer. So this is one of the main functions of the pathway is to form this active dimer. Once we have this active dimer, this dimer can then translocate into the nucleus and it can induce the expression of non-canonical NF-kappa B genes. So what are some of these non-canonical NF-kappa B genes? Well, some of them include BCL2 and BCLXL. These are anti-apoptotic proteins and they are involved in B cell maturation and B cell survival. And P52 and RELB also inhibit some gene expression as well. And one of those genes is BIM. So BIM is actually an apoptotic protein. It's a pro-apoptotic protein. P52 and RELB actually inhibit BIM. So because P52 and RELB increase the expression of BCL2 and BCLXL, which are anti-apoptotic proteins, this actually promotes cell survival. This is why we see this pathway can be involved in many cancers, specifically immune cancers and some other immunopathologies. So in another lesson, we're going to get into more detail about how this pathway and what kind of mutations and problems in this pathway can lead to certain types of cancer. We'll talk about that in another lesson. Anyways, guys, that was an overview lesson on the non-canonical NF-kappa B signaling pathway. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please like and subscribe for more videos like this one. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.